just remember always having these in our holiday goodie bags. On the other hand, I bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books. Oh my gosh. Rainy and windy as it is these days. It's the perfect time to read a mystery book. Look at that cover. It's gorgeous. I love it when covers have like these really cute and pretty illustrations. I'll give this to you. Oh, I'm so glad I actually wore this leather jacket today. I thought I wouldn't need it, but it is so cold right now. I mean, look at your hair. It's all messed up. Okay, this one is the pumpkin spice. And this one is the apple spice macchiato. freshener than anything else. But because it's like cold and chilly and a bit, um, I guess it's very gloomy and cloudy. Perfect for like the dark academia type of vibe. I got this one. It's very, I think it's unisex, but smells more masculine than feminine, but in a very chic way. It has pink pepper, orange blossom, cloves, that's definitely what you're smelling right now, chestnut, vanilla, and cedar wood. Amazing stuff. I totally recommend that you just spray this everywhere this month and then by the next time during this month next year you could spray the same scent again and you'll kind of get like a wave of memories and if you do that every year it's like it's very nostalgic skeptical about this angel hairbrush because I know it's popular and a lot of people talk about it and rave about its detangling um, aspects but rolls around.
want me to turn the heater on? Okay. Just tell me. stores get their scents, but like, duh, they, oh, like most clothing stores use their own perfume, but for the longest time I thought they were using some kind of candle or air freshener, whatnot, but the perfume is the secret. Little bear haircut. bring sheet masks in my bag now. Just cause. In case I like sleep over at your house or I just have time in the car for some pampering. I just like to put on a sheet mask. stories or something. I got inspired by that, so I've been keeping a bit of skincare products in my bag. Look, a pumpkin. I'm gonna look so cute. And I'm gonna take your photo so you could also post it. I feel like I always end up pampering you when you're in my car, but I don't hear any complaints. I mean, I like doing it. Gotta use the rest of the essence. Can never let it go to waste.
I'll send it to you later. I'll do your lips after, because you still want to drink the coffee, right? really heavy or my shoulders suffer but it's better than not having what I need when I need it. Reese's peanut butter cups. Here you go. You can put this one in your bag. This reminds me of school. I just remember always having these in our holiday goodie bags. But I'll tell you a secret. I used to hate these when I was young. I hated it. And so I always gave it to my sister, who's a chocolate fanatic. But you know, things change when you grow older. You know, it's best not to look at the ingredients actually when you're eating it. It's like, you kind of know that it's not good for you. So, you just treat yourself occasionally with these kinds of chocolates and candy and treats. It's actually a little bit difficult to chew with the mask on. But you look so cute. Because like you're nibbling. Like a, like a small mouse. I have last year. Maybe it's just because I chose soy milk instead of oat milk this time. I, I don't know if I like it or not. Um, yours was just regular milk, I believe. Oh my gosh. Are you like lactose intolerant? I'm sure they still work. I'm sure they do. Because I've been taking these for like the past three months. Or whatever. They'll still work. If not, then don't worry. Because I also have pumpkin spice potpourri <laughs> to use in the restroom over there if your stomach betrays you. Gosh. 
How funny is this? Pumpkin spice. Even when you're doing your number two. I feel like this is like something that shouldn't be done because imagine if you use this like every day, you're just gonna associate pumpkin spice with poop. That's horrible. But, you know, it's fall, so I had to get everything fall themed. I haven't used this yet, so. <laughs> I just think it's kind of hilarious. Before you open yours. Other hand. It's orange. It is the season for this orange color. I'm gravitating towards everything orange and yellow and brown right now. And then look at my hair, obviously. But by the time Christmas rolls around, it's gonna be like green and red. And then maybe blue and pink for spring. But it, it just makes life more fun. I've been living so long with like this monochrome aesthetic that I'm kind of sick of just plain colors. I need more color in my life. And the perfect time to start is when the holiday rolls around, right? My goal is to finish this by the end of the year because I have a problem with buying all these holiday themed stuff and then having a whole load of items by like springtime and summertime and then buying new holiday items <laughs> when it rolls around the next year. Just like So I, so my goal is to finish this here. I'm gonna put it on you too. This hand and this hand. It's a problem. to target anymore. I can't be going to Target or Ross or TJ Maxx or Burlington's because I tell myself that I'm just gonna go and buy what I need like some tissues or maybe like a lip balm and then I end up with a cartload stuff that, you know, I practically have no room for, but in my head, I like try to justify it. I try to say that I'm gonna gift it to other people, or, or like I'll use it in, in the next couple years, but I know I'm not. So, right now I have banned myself from going to a certain shopping plaza, at least Help. You're gonna have to keep me accountable. That reminds me. Not only are there certain shops and places um, very dangerous for me, 
the bookstores as well. Because I went fall book shopping last week and I I went over budget. <laughs> They're all in my book bag. I bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books. Oh my gosh. And five of them are hardcover. So bad. I'm horrible. I'm actually... I feel so bad for my bank account right now. But at the same time, I'm like so happy and giddy. Because I can't wait to read all of this. Okay. I'm like boring and more with all these books in my bag. But the first one is Frankenstein. No, like I actually didn't even need to buy this one because I already read it like two years ago. But it's it's a special edition cover. So, I was like, it's a classic book, it'll always be a classic, and it's great to have it on my bookshelf. And so, it's the perfect season to read it as well, Frankenstein. So yeah, that's how I justified it. Have you read this before? It's actually a lot more sad than I thought it would be. I actually feel for the mom. I do recommend it. If you want to borrow it, I'll give it to you. Next one is... Um... Dracula. <laughs> um... Like... It's kind of obvious why I bought this, so just look at the book. It's like, it's so pretty. And look at the gold. It's shimmering in the light. And I read like a chapter before putting it in my basket. Mm, I didn't know that the story was in like a letter journal format. Which is not my favorite to read, I'll be honest. But I was intrigued, and it's definitely more different than what the mainstream Dracula image is. At least the image that I had of Dracula. So I'm like, I'm not even halfway. This is a bookmark, ribbon bookmark as well. But it is interesting, and I will tell you what my thoughts are once I finish it. And then, oh, I got this one, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Stories. I, the actual story of Dr. Chuck and Mr. Hyde is really like this long. The rest is other stories. I will say, I wasn't a complete fan of it. Because um, I thought that it will be more about someone that suffers with dissociative identity disorder. But it, was, it felt more supernatural than psychological. So I think that's what got me a bit disappointed about it. But nonetheless, you know, it's a classic. Everyone knows what a classic is, and I wanted to know what this what this hype was all about. <laughs> of course I have to get an Agatha Christie book. And then there were none. Mystery books. You know, when it's cloudy and gloomy and rainy and windy as it is these days. It's the perfect time to read a mystery book. Yeah. 
Do you read a lot of mysteries? My first mystery books were... Oh my gosh. It's the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. Those were... That was my, like, first introduction ever to mystery books when I was young. And then I didn't really get back into mystery until a long time later. But I think this was my first who done it mystery. And of course, because it was my first and also because I'm a little bit dumb, I did not find out who did it. And I was completely shocked. And I felt bamboozled. But it was very thrilling. It was actually kind of scary. Like I didn't want to continue reading by myself in my room. I just felt like a sense of like dread coming over me. But, you know, that that's what makes it fun. And so, because I finished one story from Agatha Christie, that's just the introduction for her many other stories. But yeah, it was, it was nice. There's actually Cricket House and Endless Night in here as well. But once again, it's a hardcover. It has its own ribbon bookmark. You cannot pass that. Oh, this one was actually pretty nice. It's Bell's Library. So a collection of literary quotes and inspirational musings. So the idea is what? kind of books Belle will have in her library, you know, from Beauty and the Beast, and just quotes from those set books. I think it's very cute. I'm not much of, like, a poetry reader, but I can get behind reading quotes and things that, you know, famous people have said, so illustrations as well. Like, did I even need this book? Let me just look at the cover. Yes, I needed it. I think it's so cute. And you know that Belle is my favorite princess, so. Let's see. book list. So it has lots of quotes from other famous books like Gulliver's Travels, The Canterbury Tales, The Odyssey, Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer Night's Dream. And I like the idea um, because if you like a certain quote from a certain book, that you find in here, you can actually find inspiration to read the actual book. Let's see. This one it says, indeed. Showing kindness to strangers goes a long way. Really, you should always treat others the way you would wish to be treated. You never know what their unique circumstances might be. It's so cute and it's yellow. I couldn't resist. Mm. I bought a used um, Coraline book. I never read it when I was young. I remember this being in like, uh, like an elementary school classroom. I think this was like in my fourth grade class, and then I found it in like my middle school library, and then I found it in my friend's like room. I, like, I remember encountering this book many, many times, but never having the interest to pick it up, even when I watched a movie. But 
I've heard that this is actually really creepy, like even more creepy than books written for adults. So I was like, hmm, I really am enjoying middle grade novels right now. Why not? So, you know, I think I should read it alongside the Coraline soundtrack. was so creepy. Like, the cover itself was just so creepy and much younger. I was like, I'm not going to read that. Um, but I've heard good things about it. And I think it is the perfect season to read it. And this was only like a dollar. So, and I'm not the type to really care about how my books look. Like, even if it's like tattered like this and has writing inside. I kind of like um, the look of books being loved, you know? Like it has its own past, its history, especially books that are a lot older than I am. And sometimes I could find um, like a short letter on the cover um, that's like dated uh, like 30 years ago. And I kind of find it sad. Like because I always wonder, like, how did certain books get to, like, stores? Or, like, I wonder if the person that received it died or something like that. It <laughs> I have, like, all these thoughts. But, nonetheless, I just really like when books have its own history behind it. So I have a couple books where it's signed by, like, a teacher or, like, a mother um, that is gifting it to their student or the child, and it's dated, like, 1984. And I'm like, oh, how cute. And their penmanship is also always so beautiful. Like, the cursive and the writing it inspires me to practice my own penmanship. Yeah, because, like, you have to admit, People in this, in our current generation, like, our writing is not so pretty. It's because we're texting too much. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, like, kind of learning my cursive again. And, oh yeah, I was practicing my cursive, like, a month ago. And I realized that I never learned how to write capital H like, in cursive, because I specifically remember being absent on that day in third grade, because we will practice, like, two letters a day in cursive during, like, a certain month in third grade, and I remember being sick and skipping H, and so I never learned how to write <laughs> H in cursive. Strange about the things you remember. Of course, I need to get like a wholesome book after, because like this is creepy, this is mysterious, this has a lot of spooky vibes, but I needed like a wholesome autumn book as well, so like this is autumn in a book. I mean, look at that cover. It's gorgeous. I love it when covers have like these really cute and pretty illustrations, but it's Anne of the Island. I guess it's set in the fall. I I haven't started this yet. I read the original Anne of Green Gables, and I don't know what number book this is within the series. But I heard from a friend that you could read this as a standalone if you want, so that's why I got it. It says, at 18 years old, Anne is leaving Green Gables for university. Her life's dream but her feelings are bittersweet. Although excited to see the world, she is heartbroken to leave her home and everyone she loves. Before long, she has made new friends, including handsome Roy Gardner, who seems to have stepped out of her dreams. When her childhood friend, Gilbert Blythe, finally confesses his love, it takes tragedy for Anne to realize what her heart desires. I mean, I already know that Anne is gonna get with Gilbert, but 
I like to see the process of things. Like, it's just me to really like spoilers, you know? Do you like spoilers? I mean, I feel like some people hate getting spoiled, but I actually love to get spoiled about things. Because I like to see the process, like, and, and I want to know how it ends. So, like, if it ends badly or if it ends in a way that I don't want it to end, then I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to watch it or I'm not going to read it. But if I like how it ends, that might let me read and see the process of how that happens. And it's more exciting for me. It happens with like every movie I watch, every show, every book I read, every like manga I read to. I'm like, guys, I need spoilers. And so I'll go to like community pages, I'll read comments. I'm just like, I want to get spoiled. Please tell me what happens. Do these characters end up together or not? Or like, does a character die? Like, what happens? And I like to know everything. And then I'll just like enjoy the process. That's not strange, is it? Because I know there are other people like me. No, my sister is like the exact opposite. Like every time I try to like hint at like a character, um, like at these characters that will get together in the end, she's like, no, 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 stop, stop. She's like stop it or I'm gonna leave like I'm literally gonna leave this like this living room and watch it myself like but like I know you like these characters so like why are you mad I need to shut my mouth when I'm watching movies with other people it's a habit but by the way speaking of movies have you watched anything fun recently like this horror movie and this horror movie and I'm like guys stop I can't watch horror like I know this is the season but I really can't like I don't want to like I won't be able to sleep I won't be able to like go to the bathroom in peace and I, like it would haunt me literally like the memories of certain gory scenes that I've seen in my childhood like I, like I vividly remember it still to this day and I will just not be able to sleep so horror movies are an absolute no go for me but thriller movies on the other hand like psychological thrillers with like maybe a sub romance genre thrown in. Oh my gosh. It's the cherry on top. Especially when you get like this romantic tension with like the villain and the main girl. <laughs> sexual for like the type of situation like the characters are in you know it's a bit stupid so I'm trying to find like a movie where like everything where like the thrill and the mystery and the romance just all work together very well with not like an ending that's super sad or bad or like too positive but just realistic as well like I'm a sucker for bittersweet endings so I 
I've been trying to spoil myself with a lot of different movie endings these days. I've been just like going down these movie lists and trying to find something to watch that I'll like. But it's been kind of difficult. It has been kind of difficult. So these days I'm just like listening to uh, certain playlists and making up on stories in my head. I'm probably going to be a writer in the next two or three years. I mean, that's how I started, uh, like, the short stories. When I was, like, back in school, I mean, that's how I started writing, like, these short novellas for, like, myself, because I used to be on Wattpad, you know, the orange app every single day, and during a certain period, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not finding stories that I like anymore. So I started writing them myself. Oh my gosh! I used to upload on the app as well. Under like some weird, <laughs> cringy username. But, no. I deleted all of that. It's so cringy. I used to like tell my family members. Like, hey, I upload a story. Go and read it. And like... It is so cringy. Why did I like share it with other people? Like people I know. And to think that it all started just because I liked reading free books. I was like, I don't have the money to buy books. I don't have, like I didn't have a credit card to buy books online as well. So I was like, I'm trying to read some books for free. And that's when I found um, <laughs> Wattpad. I found Fiction Press. Fanfiction.net. And I was so, so happy. It was the most hilarious yet academic moment of my childhood. feeling hydrated enough. You know, I mean your skin is only going to get more drier as the time goes on now. So I recommend lots of face mist and cheap And also a sleeping mask before you fall asleep so that in the morning your face will still be fully moisturized and hydrated There's gonna be no parking in my small little apartment complex. I give this to you. You should try spraying it in your own car. And right, 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 right. Uh, I was gonna give this book to you, the book that I've already finished and read. You should uh, post it on your Instagram story. Bookish Moments. <laughs>